Milk carton, baby. It's milk carton time. And this is no surprise. <laughs> we are putting Mike Babcock on the milk cart because he is no longer the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I just got to say, the fact that Paul Bissonnette took this guy down is fucking... I mean, we talk about you know how far it's come with podcasts and obviously Chicklets is the OGs of this shit and Biz with TNT and everything he's got going. You know, we said besides Gretzky, yeah. Biz is probably the most... He's got influential the most pull, hockey, influential, thank you. Media, pl- media personality on the planet right now for us, it's, and it's great. It's just funny if, if Bob's just sitting at home being like, Paul Bissonnette, he couldn't fucking cross over. He couldn't play. Just yeah. ended my career. Do you think he's sitting at home wherever he is in Saskatchewan being like, Paul Biz ended it for me? No, I think he ended it for himself. But yes, but Biz shining light on this, and I think he just had enough. I think Biz stepped up for, for hockey players in general and said, enough with this old boys club of bullies. Um, if this is true, and I think it is, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. And, and he backed up his word three or four times via Twitter, via his podcast, which just like you said, they're the OGs and it proves that you can have a voice. And I'm glad that it got shined. I'm glad they investigated it. I'm glad that players stepped up and spoke the truth at the beginning. You didn't know what the hell was going on. Boone Jetter kind of swifted under the rug. That's where I want to go with you. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is, and you know, Biz has built a platform, and and like he said, he said, I caught something he said today. He's like, he didn't give a fuck if Babs got fired or not. He was just bringing it to his attention. But yeah, he didn't say fire Babs. No, but deep no. down, it's just to me, it's funny that Paul Biz and that fucking cost Babs his job. But um, listen, you talk about the players, and me and you sat in this very studio last week when the, when the story surfaced, and I'll be honest, I was on the fence. You you were you were kind of, you know, agreeing with with what it was coming out that this can't happen. I'm like, give it some time, like. If a coach asked you to look at a family of a picture of Beckham and, and Izzy, I'm sure you would show it. Like he's just trying to get to know these guys. And then Johnny Hockey and Booner Boone Jenner come out and say what they did say. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is just misunderstood. My question is, who made those guys come out and say that? Did the did the did Davidson and the GM say you guys got to squash this right now? Because if that's the case, then there's a bigger problem than just Babcock with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Or did Boone Jenner and Johnny Hockey want to come out and say this? To me, them coming out and now it unfolding the way it did. Maybe there's bigger problems in Columbus than just Mike Babcock. Because if they're trying to sweep it under the rug, that's not the answer ups. If you're the GM and you're the fucking president of the fucking Columbus Blue Jackets, you got to do the right thing here. Not just, oh, boys, we got to clean this up because training camp's around the corner. So I don't know the answer to that. I would like to find out if they made Boone Jenner and Johnny Hockey say that statement. Because after that, I thought it was done. And credit to the NHLPA, Marty Walsh, the new um, director of the NHLPA, and Ron Hainsey. Yeah. Listen, they went down there. This is what we pay the union for. They went down there. They did their work. They found out. Players went and talked to them. That felt comfortable. And we all know what happened. Uh, well said. I just want to jump in and say, you know, the beginning of this whole fiasco, if four years ago, Mike Babcock gets fired for something that he shouldn't have done. Yeah. You would think, and I, I, I think maybe even you on this podcast said, like, you know, time should have healed this. Time should have, you know, made Mike Babcock realize what he did. He, he's getting another chance. Maybe he deserves it. Maybe not. People did their due diligence on bringing this guy back. Obviously, the guy has issues that are unfixable. Yeah, unless he really went and sought help for this and just can't help himself. But you know, to me, you put him back in a spot like this with younger players, and the investigation is going to tell you your question, your question on what happened, and if someone that, that investigation hopefully will have taken care of, you know, how it how it worked out from top to bottom. Top to bottom, why this guy was chosen as a coach is the question to me. Where, where does this fall on? Who Who's to blame for bringing this guy? And, you know, would this affect these young players now forever? Just the fact that they know that they're part of an investigation before they've even played one game in the NHL. How does that affect them moving forward? There's, well, there's questions to be had now how this whole trickle-down effect. Boone Jenner, uh, as the captain of this team, is going to have to go in and is going to have to, you know, be honest about – what the team needs, how they're going to fix this moving forward. Training camp starting tomorrow. You know, there's there's going to be issues. I, if I was on that team, I wouldn't want this to be an issue. I wouldn't want this to be talked about anymore. If I was a leader on that team, if I was an assistant captain or I was the captain, this thing would have to be addressed. I'd want to hear from the GM what the hell. Like this now needs to be a communication thing. What the hell is going on? What went on? What do you know that I don't know? Because I need to go to my team and we need to squash this now because we've got to focus on hockey, right? I don't know. Do you think that we've seen the last 
resignations in Columbus? Is there going to be more that comes out? Like, it seems like Babs stepping down was the easy way out. Yeah. Is there going to be more to this? Well, I mean, I think, there, it, I to, think it seems like he did it to staff members and to young players. And what really was the straw that broke the camel's back was him doing it away from the rink to a really young player. Yeah. I think we know the name of that guy, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll let other people talk about that. I mean, I think, I think, like I said, about the statement that Boone Jenner and Johnny Hockey came out and made. Now, if they wanted to do that on their own, that's how they felt. Fine. If the, the if the organization made them say that, being like, boys, like I said, we have to sweep this on the rug, then there might be some more digging by the NHLPA. Time will tell on that. I would use this, and listen, it's Columbus. There's not a whole lot of media, but I'm with you. I hope they just leave this alone once training camp starts. They have a new head coach, uh, Vincent Pascal or Pascal Vincent. I I don't know who this uh, who is this guy. Pascal Vincent is yeah, his name. Pascal Vincent. He, uh, I liked him up. Well, I, I wish him the best of luck. I hope, I hope he does well. DB here. If I'm in the Columbus Blue Jackets dressing room, we we often bag on Columbus, especially you, right? I mean, about how, you know how bad it is and this and that. But there are all the eyeballs are on them right now for something that is not good. However, people are going to see how they respond. I would use that if I'm Boone Jenner, Johnny Hockey, um, you know, Severson, a guy they brought in. Gabranson, not these vet. Let's use this to rally around, boys. Let, let's go out and let's get off to a good start. It, it could be easy for them to say, hey, if things don't go well, well, our coach got fired a week before training camp. It's been a shit show. We would send this podcast and probably not blame them. However, I want to see them use it as a rallying point. Get off to a good start. Stick together. Come out. Play hard for your fans because people are watching. I'm going to keep my eye on the Columbus Blue Jackets more now than I would have at the, the start of the season. Right? Wrong? Who gives a fuck? I'm watching them. So, boys, rally around it. Let's go. Play hard. Play hard for this new guy. Play hard for your teammates. And, and don't make it a laughing stock. Rally around it, Ups. I hope they do. This Babcock, like, he, he he comes in, he sets up his coaching office, probably brings in some photos, fucking eats all the protein bars, has all the Gatorades, and then he's just gone before even training camp starts. Yeah, can you believe it? Like, can, can, can a guy Listen, not figure it out? I, I, I had Babs. This, the shit he's done. I know. Just insane. real quick. So Cooley had Babs on the power play near the end of the season when I was co-hosting with him. And Babs came on. And I truly said to you, I'm like, I think this guy's changed. So I fucking drank the Kool-Aid. I, I was wrong. But go go over what he's done. Like, when you look at this, like, what a fucking bad dude kind of here. The, like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So it starts benching Chelios, the 2009 Winter Classic. He basically played two shifts. And then Chelly went in and poured beer in his water bottle, took his skates off, and just... Had beers on the bench. That's great. The Mike Medano one game shy of fifteen hundred last game of the year when the when the Detroit Red Wings were already in the playoffs is is a joke to be had. And if you go on Mike Medano's hockey DB, it's fourteen ninety nine complete joke. Wow, you can't and do then, that to Mikey Mo. We all know the Marner thing, but the the Jason Spezza first game as a Toronto Maple Leaf, his hometown, playing against his former team Ottawa Senators, in the first fucking game of the year. The guy signs for seven fifty, comes in to play that game. And Mike Babcock sits him out, sits him out, saying, "We need some penalty killers on this." <laughs> what the? F yeah, yeah, man. It uh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So. so I'm glad. Like this, this is just a bad. Guy. This is a bad guy. He's a bad guy, and he's out of hockey. Karma. He is out of hockey forever. Forever. We'll never have to worry about Mike Babcock again.